Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Market Bites podcast. I am Sam North, a market analyst based here in the UK, and I'm joined by Josh Gilbert, a market analyst based in Sydney, Australia. Josh, how are you? Very good, Sam. Very good. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. Uh, I recently got back from Las Vegas and I'm alive and I've got enough money to see me through to payday. So all in all, I can't really complain too much, can I? No, that's a success. I mean, if you're coming back from Vegas in one piece and still have money in your bank account, I think we're ticking that as a success. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it's been a struggle the last couple of days, but the sacrifice was was worth it. Um, for our listeners today, I'm going to try and stay awake as long as possible. But Josh, you're going to help me with that because we're going to discuss the Fed next week. Really big meeting. Uh, and then obviously we've got some real big earnings coming up. And then we can probably review both of the earnings from Tesla and Netflix who have already reported. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. Massive, massive week next week for sure. So yeah, good overview of that and a, and a bit of a recap of what we've seen this week. Yeah. Looking forward to it. First up then, the Fed. Uh, what are we expecting heading into this meeting? You know, what do we need to keep an eye on from the next FOMC monetary policy decision? The decision comes next Wednesday, uh, along with the press conference, and it will be the last decision until September the 20th. So there'll be a lot of eyes on it uh, as we head into maybe a more quieter period of August. So 26th, Wednesday uh, is going to be the next meeting. But Josh, what what are you uh, what are you keeping an eye on? Yeah, well, we, we mentioned there that it is a massive week, um, but it's also just a big week in general on the central bank front. Uh, we've got obviously the Fed, as, as you mentioned there, Sam, um, but we've also got the ECB. We've also got the Bank of Japan, meaning that monetary policy is, is probably going to be front and centre. Um, maybe slightly overshadowed by big tech, but let's see. But then on top of that, economically, we've got Q Q2 GDP from the US, Q2 inflation from Australia. That's going to be a really big number for the RBA's next move. US PCE inflation at the end of the week as well. So bottom line, a huge week. But for the Fed, it seems like we've got another 25 basis point hike nailed on uh, next week. Um, economic data has been pretty mixed since the Fed last met, um, but we have seen inflation falling significantly. Core has dropped, which has been the sort of the key number, I think, that uh, investors have focused on. We've seen this rally in markets continue over the last sort of week or two on the expectations that the Fed are coming to the end of, of this tightening cycle with some of that economic data moving in the right direction. But labor markets are remaining resilient, which is a good thing if we're looking at this from, from an idea of a, a soft landing. Going back to the Q3 outlook that we did uh, back at the start of this month, um, we were talking about in indicators of a recession and we were talking a lot there about labor markets. They're continuing to hold up and continuing to be resilient in the US, which you know basically points to the Fed being able to still deliver on on that soft landing um but it is still going to be you know a worry for the fed that the labor market is this tight so it's a bit of a, a goldilocks scenario uh in that sense but given that markets are pretty much pricing in a 25 basis point move now that's pretty much booked in i think the focus will likely turn towards jay powell's remarks at the press conference afterwards that's usually market movers because what we usually get before going into the meeting is, is sort of priced in these days. And I think that markets have priced in a couple of hikes. They've then sort of come back off of that, maybe thinking there's only just sort of one more hike left um, that we're going to get this month. But I think that, you know, depending on which way power moves is, is going to be really important for markets. I think it may be a, a signal that the Fed might take a sort of a wait and see approach at the September meeting, but also, you know, cautioning on the side that, you know, Fed members still expect at least one more rate hike before year end. Last press conference, he said that, um, you know, members expected at least two more hikes before year end as well. But there is a strong case that hike next week could mark the final hike that we see this year if the economy does sort of weaken again that sounds strange to say but if the economy does weaken um more in the next few months and there's more evidence that you know what the what the fed have done so far is 
uh, working. But I think Powell will reiterate again that there is still more work needed to completely tame inflation. He's not going to take the foot off the gas there. But as I said earlier, I think the good news is that the Fed seems to be on a good pathway to avoiding that recession and delivering a soft landing. Um, inflation moving lower means that consumers are under less pressure, which then translates to increased purchasing power, which in turn should help GDP in the second quarter or second half of this year, uh, as we know, which is obviously very good for avoiding the dreaded recession. Yeah, although I did see uh, on the 19th, so two days ago, Jim Cramer saying he doesn't see a recession on the horizon, just like we didn't need that really, Jim. did we? Keep it quiet. But uh, you know what? I mean, listen, the S&P 500, depending on the day you're listening to this, is, is up 19, 20% this year. The NASDAQ, you know, north of 40, unless we have a bad Friday. Uh, even if markets do come down a touch, I, th I think it excites, you know, investors and short-term traders to get involved to, to buy a potential dip. So, uh, yeah, obviously very key for the remainder of the summer. Uh, I mean, it was last August, wasn't it, with Jackson Hole, which marked a short-term top when Jerome Powell came out and basically said the market's getting way too excited. Uh, but things look under control. Worst case scenario seemed avoided for now until Jim Cramer opened his mouth. Um, right, next week, and before we talk about the earnings in general, because it's a massive week, let's review Tesla and Netflix, and then I'll have a quick look at the charts as well. I mean, what were the key standouts for you from those reports. I mean, Tesla on the day was down 8.88% and Netflix was down 8.27%, but both of them year to date have performed very, very well. Um, so to put us in perspective, Josh, over to you. Yeah, well, two big falls from both stocks, as you mentioned, Sam, but I think it wasn't all that bad. I think it, right. the, 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 the fall that we've had after hours is, is probably worse but when you've seen the gains that you mentioned there that both yeah. these stocks have seen this year you know netflix in excess of you know i think 40 50 percent and ted's are up more than 100 yeah. percent. anything but perfect will be punished and was punished but as i say ne neither of these results were were ter terrible you know netflix added a huge number of subscribers at 5.89 million that was well above 2 million that was expected so over 100 percent beat on expectations there and that was up from 970,000 loss in the same period a year ago. Um, Tesla set record quarterly revenues with 47% growth and earnings beat expectations. Any other earnings season, the markets like both these results, and they'll focus on those points that I've just mentioned there. But this earnings season, it was all about sort of the finer details. And as I say, when you've got those gains that you've seen so far this year, there's no margin for error. So with Netflix, sales growth was slower than expected. Also had a weak outlook for Q3, which was below estimates. And that was what really disappointed the street. Again, guidance, a big focus. It's new ad tier as well. Um, and those password policies that it rolled out, they, 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 they've been working. Absolutely. They, they've driven subscriber numbers, but it isn't quite doing enough to drive sales meaningfully just yet, which is, is shown in that revenue number and in its revenue forecast. The other side to that, though, if it's ad tiers, can continue to see those big pickup in users. Advertisers are going to be knocking hard on that door in a big way, which I think could be a big boost for, for revenues. Um, and as I say, I think expectations were high heading into the results. So I'm not sure investors should be too disheartened by any weakness in the share price, especially after such a solid run. Uh, and a huge turnaround for Netflix after what we've seen in the last sort of couple of years or so. Um, and I think they're starting to shrug off their struggles, Netflix, but it may take a bit more time for that growth story to come back to, to sort of full fruition for Tesla. It was the margins that came back to hurt them. We, we spoke about it, um, on, on an episode, I think a week or two ago. And, and that was what, what the, what really hurt them. Automotive margins fell to 19.2% under that golden 20% number, excluding regulatory credits. It fell to 18.1%. Lots of conversation about it being in line with estimates, under estimates. There's lots of people who give out estimates these days, but bottom line, I think that was the number that the street was disappointed with. And, and as per blue, Bloomberg estimates, it was below Bloomberg's numbers as well. Um, but 
same thing it's worth noting that, that these margins are still far higher than the broad of automotive industry and are still extremely impressive go and look at toyota ford's numbers they're absolutely nowhere near that um teslas are almost sort of three to four times but bottom line is tesla shareholders aren't accustomed to being disappointed and, and that's what's happening at the moment there was also a few worries elsewhere over things like inventory that is starting to sort of back up production numbers um are expected to drop in q3 there was no mentions of cyber truck deliveries and there was worries that musk will sort of keep spending on on you know ai and and other areas of the business which may eat into profitability flip side there was some good news i think from from full size driving F fsd and superchargers um, that look to start bringing in revenue to that as well but i think the key for investors here is to see Tesla stabilize its margins over the next few quarters whilst continuing to drive volumes to sort of get to that end goal of the 50% growth in deliveries by sort of year end. So bottom line, not at all terrible, but not perfect from either of these tech names. And that's why we've seen them punished. Yeah. And, and I guess potentially a sign of things to come right from earnings if you don't meet those expectations of what the street wants then you're going to come under pressure quite significantly mainly because of the strong year that a lot of these stocks have had looking at tester share price i mean it's it's mid-range for me between a key level of 315 which is that you know the summer high from last year uh, and then support around 239 we're trading at 267 give or take when you're listening to this so in, as long as we stay above 240 i think tester shareholders will be absolutely fine with uh, price moving uh, lower, uh, and that would be an area where people may look to add to position, buy a dip, use it as support to stay in the trade. And then similarly on uh, Netflix, to the upside, we didn't quite reach it. Uh, 507 uh, was the, the gap from uh, earnings pretty much this sort of time last year, funny enough. But um, 437, where, where we're trading uh, on Thursday's close, and as long as it stays above 385, I, I think market will be happy. You know, it's an area where we broke ahead, uh, broke above, I should say, the back end of May, early June, accelerated on. And as long as we stay above that, I think Netflix shareholders will will be fine. And listen, since, you know, May, June last year, it's been on a nice push higher. Yes, there's been opportunities to buy the dip as well. Is this just another one? I think that's what shareholders will be looking at. Uh, I mean, look, next week's earnings start now as we look to prepare and navigate through a busy period. Um, what sticks out for you from that uh, next five, from the next five days? Uh, and what should we keep an eye on, Josh? Yeah, I, I mean, arguably earnings weeks don't get much yep. bigger than this. Um, you've got Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon and Meta, four of the magnificent seven, and they make up 10% of the weight of the S&P 500. So it, it's a market moving week absolutely um and after a pretty poor start from tesla and netflix that we just discussed there i think that you know investors are going to want some upbeat numbers from some of those big names to really ensure that this tech rally doesn't fade um you know this could be you know a, a pretty poor earning season all in all if we carry on along this sort of track and i think you know ben spoke about it a, a couple of weeks ago um when we've had a few conversations with him that it's sort of the no man's land of of earnings uh, which it absolutely is and, and it is a difficult period to sort of try and navigate but keep listening to us and, and we'll give you everything that you need but oh, yes. um you, you mentioned it there though sam and i think if this that week this week has taught us anything that you know and anything but perfect is going to be punished under the idea of, you know, higher valuations and this colossal rally that we've seen so far this year. But the key, it's going to be AI again. Um, of course, it's going to be AI. Um, you know, Musk was referring to it a fair bit in his conference call this week as well. Um, it will be what catches the headlines. Um, all four of these names are on the AI train. Microsoft is clearly the leader in the AI space, given its ownership in in chat gpt creator open ai and therefore i think that's going to be front and center next week i think that could be a big name to watch um you know wall street is really going to want to see that you know these tech giants are starting to convert this technology into revenue um it needs to be it needs to be a revenue maker from these businesses and uh, again we'll get to that later in earnings season but nvidia will be the main one there um and with microsoft it's going to be really interesting to see 
um, and hear about its progress with Activision. Been in the news, you know, a lot over the last couple of weeks. If they're getting closer to that, because that could be a really, really big uh, merger. But I think Meta might be the standout. Earnings are expected to grow year over year for the first time since 2021. Um, so that's, again, you know, the year of efficiency, driving back towards profitability again or, or earnings growth. And obviously we had threads that launched as well. Again, that was probably after, um, you know, the, the numbers for, for sort of Q2. I think it came at the start of Q3. But that was 100 million users in, in five days. It was the fastest app growing app of all time beating ChatGPT. So, you know, that could really help boost um, outlook and, and guidance, maybe slightly priced in potentially, but I think that could be uh, a great push for, for guidance. For Amazon, I think that they should see a rebound in online sales after they've fallen for the last two quarters. Um I think, again, similar to what I've just said there with Meta, Q3 outlook may be better than expected, potentially already priced in. Prime sales were the best on record, which was over the last sort of couple of weeks. So something to keep an eye on there. But on the other side of that, you've got to watch for a potential slowdown in AWS revenue. Um, they've had five consecutive slowdowns in AWS revenue growth. This could be the sixth. And I think that could put the stock under some pressure because... AWS is, um, you know, is, is an absolute beast for, for Amazon. Bottom line, we mentioned it a minute ago, results have got to be solid and outlooks are going to be just as important. Big tech has the potential to keep outperforming, to keep driving the NASDAQ higher as it has done for the whole of 2023, particularly with those AI tailwinds. That's not going to leave anytime soon, but it certainly isn't going to come without its challenges. Yeah, I mean, what a week. What a week next week. I mean, you That's chuck it. all of that in and then the Fed meeting, you, you almost sit down and say, well, if we fast forward to next Friday, which is the 28th of uh, of July, and we can somehow stay flat in the market. I mean, what a result. You'd oh, almost be looking at like that. Yeah. Whoa, uh, lower. Lower. Only because um, of what we've seen from a couple of stocks we've already mentioned, summer season uh been on a lovely rally and that's my theory behind it but i do think dips will be bought i just think i'd be surprised if we push higher uh next week yourself how do you feel i Gut think feel? anywhere we go anywhere we go higher is if we get the most surprising pause from jay about ever or dovish comments which we're not going to see um i think those are the only two things that could probably push the market higher i think if you unless you get an outstanding report like you did with nvidia that time mm. you know the, the expectation is just to just to deliver at this point so as we said anything but perfect you, you're going to see some weakness which we know will put these sort of markets under pressure but um you know i'm looking for resilience if we get some resilience yeah. i think that's the key and as you said there finish the week uh you know slightly flat then you know we're probably walking away with it saying okay we're, we're happy with that yeah i'd agree so and i think if we Pessimist. get a flat week yeah and if we get a flat week i think the week after we'd be pretty positive if people sit down and be like ah huh, okay we didn't crash um yeah. but look on that positive note uh we'll wrap it mm. for another week josh i hope you have a, a good weekend thank you sam same to you take care everyone trade safe